I am soulfully intense. I am limp and I cling. Finished! <laughs> At last! Finished! <laughs> 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 Are you better now? Yes. Ah! Oh. What is you? Yes, I am better now. The poem is finished and my soul has gone out into it. It was nothing worth mentioning, really, that's all. It just occurs three times a day. Ah, oh, patience. A dear patience. Will it please you to read to us, sir? This we supplicate. Shall I? No! I will read it if you bid me. Okay. <laughs> you can if you like. Oh, it is a wild, weird, fleshly thing, yet very tender, very precious, very yearning. It is called, oh, a hollow, a hollow, a hollow. Is it a hunting song? <laughs> a hunting song? <laughs> no, um, no. It is not a hunting song. It is the wail of a poet's heart upon discovering that all things are commonplace. To better understand it, cling passionately to one another. Mm. And think of... Thanks, Lilies. Oh, hollow, hollow, hollow. What time the poet hath hymned the writhing maid, lithe limbs, quivering on amaranthine asphodel. How can he paint her woes, knowing as well he knows that all can be set right with calomel. When from the poet's plinth the amorous colocynth yearns for aloe paint with rapturous thrills, how can he hymn their throes knowing as well he knows that they are only uncompounded pills, is it? Or can it be? Nature hath this decree, nothing poetic in this world shall dwell or in that all her works, something poetic lurks. Even in colocynth and calomel. 